and welcome back to The The Mentors. Mentors. This is Vadim and Sergey, and you're listening to our weekly segment called The 5-Minute Pick-Me-Up, where we tell you stories to motivate you for the week to come. And today, we wanted to talk to you about the state of fundraising during this pandemic and, of course, during this quarantine where you can no longer build relationships in person, at least in the near term. Yeah, this is a question that's uh, at the forefront of every entrepreneur's mind. How does this crisis affect my fundraising strategy? Should I be raising money now or should I just defer to do it later just because the dynamics of fundraising have changed so much? And I can tell you that I'm having conversations every single week with entrepreneurs about this exact question. We've also been talking to some investors as well, and we wanted to provide you with some insight into what we're hearing from the market about how the fundraising dynamic has been changing for now. So this episode is going to be split up into two parts. One is going to be talking about whether or not you should focus on fundraising right now, and the second half will discuss the nature of fundraising and how it's changing in the present environment. So, Sergey, let's start with that first question that I posed. I mean, there's a lot of entrepreneurs right now that have been building businesses or building their startup before the pandemic hit, or even some entrepreneurs that started their venture after the pandemic hit. There's then this third class of entrepreneurs that might be starting a business because they got let go and they want to spend their time more effectively. And... I'm sure many of them are thinking about capital. How do we make sure that we can extend our runway and stay alive? So for early stage founders right now, does it make sense to raise money or to spend their time trying to get capital? Yeah. So look, I mean, the thing that hasn't changed, I think, is that if you are starting the kind of business that requires outside capital to grow and scale, and you think that you are in a position to grow and scale and can make a case for investors as to why your business is attractive, then yes, you may need to raise money and maybe you should be raising money right now. But let's look at the reality of the situation and what you should be aware, like what is different right now. The fact of the matter is that I am personally seeing and hearing from founders that valuations are dropping significantly, in some cases, half what they used to be. So founders that I'm talking to that had conversations with investors just a couple of months ago, they're still having conversations with investors where the investors are interested. But because the leverage has changed a little bit and because the markets are what they are right now and investors are a little bit more risk averse, the valuations are just dropping. So that's a reality that you're going to have to understand is that you're not going to get the same deal for the funding as you did before. So what I would add is that the question of whether or not you should raise money more or less remains the same. Actually, valuations did drop, but many investors are saying that they dropped to a more normalized level. In other words, the market corrected and then the valuations that Uh, the early stage founders were able to get up until the pandemic hit most recently were oversized. The values were too high. So in some ways, not much has changed from that perspective. The fact of the matter is the more traction you can get, which means product traction, customer traction, revenue traction, putting together the team, partners, everything that falls under that, the more traction you can get, the better valuation you'll be able to negotiate. Sergey used the word leverage about a minute ago, and leverage is still the most important part of any negotiation. The more you have done and accomplished as an entrepreneur, the more favorable terms you'll be able to negotiate for your deal. In other words, perhaps a higher valuation than somebody that's just starting out. And here's another sort of piece of information for you of the reality of the market right now. The reality is it might take you longer than it did before to raise money where, you know, the the fundraising activity was much higher, valuations were frothy, investors were willing to take risk. It just might take you a little bit longer and you might have to be smarter about the types of investors you approach because not all investors are writing checks as Actively, there are some investors, like for example, there are some types of investors, let's later stage investors that 
previously were okay with writing earlier stage riskier checks because they wanted to get in early. They wanted to play in the early stage game. They were willing to take that risk. Now they might be removing that tactic because it's too risky for them and they're not used to it. And so it might not be the right type of investor to go after. So what is the right type of investor now to go after? That's the second part of this conversation is how should we change the strategy and adopt it to maybe be more successful in fundraising given the reality of the current crisis that's happening. Before we jump into that second part, I do want to mention one thing because there are going to be a lot of people that are listening that feel more urgency to start approaching investors because their financial situation might be more in flux. And this is where I have to say again that not much has changed. Anyone that has ever approached an investor uh, desperate for money because they're running out of cash feels like a risky investment to an investor. It feels like somebody is just trying to get their money so that they can pay their bills and they will not be able to invest that money into actually growing the company. So if you are in that position where you really need some capital to pay your own bills, understand that there are other ways to fund your business. You have to be resourceful in this time. And if that means spending some of your time looking for side gigs, trying to find contracts, trying to figure out how you could spend maybe 20 hours a week, so half the week or a third of the week, depending on how many hours you plan on working, actually getting some money to finance your business through your own means, you're going to be seen as more resourceful in the future when you do approach investors And again, you're going to be much more likely to actually close that round. So that's just the one thing I wanted to mention is you still need to be as resourceful as possible. And fundraising is not going to be a good way to put out the fire of having your own personal finances in trouble right now. There's going to be other ways you have to solve that problem first. Most investors want to feel that their money is actually getting put to work to grow the business. What's also changing right now is the nature of the types of deals and companies that investors are looking for, where it was cool to grow at all costs just, you know, maybe a year ago, or even six months ago, and tell investors that your thesis is to take their money, pump it into marketing and growth, and grow as quickly as possible to build a moat with competitors. That narrative is not going to work as well right now. The types of investments that are more attractive are the companies that are really good about managing their cash flow, the companies that can get more lifetime value from their customer at a lower customer acquisition cost, the companies that are better at managing their money and extending their runway where the risk is removed. So again, because investors are a little bit more risk averse now, if you can paint your yourself as a less risky investment that's still able to scale and grow, you're going to be more likely to attract that capital. So let's talk about how should we adjust our strategy with fundraising if we decided, if you as a founder have decided that fundraising is still necessary for you right now and you should start the process right now, how can you adjust it to be more likely that you'll be successful in this? Well, first of all, you got to be even more so now targeting the right investors. But even I recorded a three-part series, Fundraising 101, um, several months ago now. Look into that if you want to get more details about how to fundraise. A lot of those rules still apply, and even more so now than before, where it's always important to have a targeted approach and approach the types of investors that actually do the type of deals that you're offering them, that know about your market, understand the industry, want to invest in that industry, et cetera. Even more important now to be more discerning about what types of investors you raise from. We talked a, a couple of weeks ago to a friend of ours who's an active investors, and we asked them, hey, are angel investors writing checks just as much as they were before? Well, not all of them. Angel investors that only dabble in investing in startups, they, again, they may not be willing to invest in startups now because they're not used to that level of risk. So you may only approach angel investors that understand your market deeply and write a lot of checks every single year. They might be writing fewer checks, but they're still going to be writing checks. Investors that you've been engaging with before the crisis may be more willing to invest in you now than people that you start engaging with uh, in this process, especially angel investors who you may not know and may not have a personal relationship with. Uh, what other types of investors would might be good for people to approach? Well, I would think about it from the perspective of what is the incentive of the investor, right? How are they making their decisions right now? If you approach a fund, for example, uh, a VC fund, 
uh, even if it's a early stage venture fund or seed fund, and they raised their fund last year and they deployed most of their capital, they're going to be thinking more about the portfolio companies they already manage. Those companies might be in trouble. They want to extend the runway of those companies to make sure that those investments don't go to zero. So they're going to be prioritizing their existing portfolio. On the flip side, if you're targeting Early investors, maybe, for example, micro VCs, this, that which have grown in popularity over the last few years, and they had just raised a fund before the pandemic hit, they're sitting on a lot of capital that they still need to deploy. So they're taking meetings with early stage founders because they don't have an existing portfolio of founders to support. And those are going to be more likely to write a check right now because they want to put their money to work. That's right. And, you know, there, there's still accelerated programs, for example, too, which come in really, really early. They usually take common stock. They invest anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred thousand dollars. Programs like Techstars, Entrepreneurs Roundtable here in New York, Acela Prize, uh, Y Combinator, of course. You want to look at the top tier programs, but those programs are still happening. They're still looking for founders to invest in, and they still have the same terms as they always did as far as the investment goes. So those might still be a good option for you. The last thing uh, we wanted to talk about is the importance of adjusting your story. Now, in any accelerator, including uh, NYU's accelerator at the Entrepreneurial Institute, what the entrepreneurs go through every single week is constantly pitching and revising their pitch and practicing their story. And part of the reason why they need to get used to that is, A, obviously you want to button up your story and make sure that it flows really well. But B, you have to get become flexible and you have to get good at changing your story as your company changes and grows or as the market changes as it did right now. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're continuing to pitch investors right now, think about how you need to adjust your story to fit the narrative of what's going on in the world, of the markets that are contracting and the other markets that are expanding to communicate the opportunity for the investor, how this is a good time for them to invest in you specifically because of what you can do to dominate the market and to stay competitive even during this difficult time. One example is there's a founder that I work with that is using the current crisis uh, to flip the narrative around how they're serving their customer better and why they're going to be in a better position actually now to negotiate long-term exclusivity contracts with their customers because their customers are more desperate to save money than before. And they're coming in with a solution that can save them money and increase revenues. So they're going to use this time to actually negotiate better deals, longer-term contracts with their customers. And they're using that as an anchor to get capital from investors now so they can start this strategy now and strike while the iron's hot. If you can switch your narrative to such that can convince investors that your new strategy can actually help you grow more or better in this current time, then that's something that you should definitely do. And if you can't change the narrative, then you do have to think long and hard about your business model and how you plan to be successful as an entrepreneur during this challenging time, because you're going to have to answer that question for yourself anyways, before you answer it for the investors. Hopefully this episode gave some of our entrepreneurs that are in the middle of a fundraising process or thinking about fundraising some insight into how they can adjust their approach. We still believe though that there's a lot you can do on your own. There's a lot you can do to be resourceful, to make sure that you can actually work on your business and that it can have a higher chance of success uh, before you even think about fundraising. But we know that for a lot of people, this is top of mind right now. And we wanted to offer this uh, as some some insight into what we're seeing in, in the market. Thanks again for listening to this week's episode of The Mentors. Uh, on Wednesday, we have another free class with Isaac Carrada, who is a developer and startup ecosystem leader at IBM. Actually, I should say he was. He is now running marketing teams at Microsoft as of this week. And he has had an incredible career. So if you're thinking about how I can continue with my career, maybe while I work on the business on the side, I know a lot of people are going to be in that position. This gentleman got a job at EA Games when he wanted to get into the gaming. He got a job at Procter & Gamble doing sales when he wanted to learn how to sell effectively. And eventually he transitioned into engineering. He taught himself how to code and landed a gig at IBM. And now he's getting into marketing. Uh, at Microsoft. So he has been able to navigate his career and transition careers and build upon it, his story, 
several times over, and uh, he is going to have something really interesting to share. Go to school16.co and drop your email at the bottom of the page. You'll get an email back with a link to RSVP to Wednesday's class at 6 p.m. Eastern. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next week.